the first wreath we're gonna make today is this one here on a grapevine base using some maidenhair fern, some lotus pods, cotton, and some assorted straw flowers from inside the colonial garden. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use some of our maidenhair fern that comes in bunches. I'm just breaking them off of, at the stems and just sticking them right into the wreath, making a fan around the bottom corner of the wreath. And I'm just weaving it right into the grapevine, which holds it really well. You don't even need to wire it down. Just making a relatively compact little fan of maiden hair to be the background. There we go. Step two is I'm using some of our assorted straw flowers, which come on wire, which is really convenient because you don't need to put them on garden picks or wire them at all. They're pre-wired. I'm gonna put them in bunches of threes. If you saw our Christmas video, you remember that we use odd number bunches because it's more appealing to the eye. So I have three bunches here of assorted colors. I'm gonna make one more. by Cutting them off a few inches down from the flower. You can either use scissors or wire cutters. Now I'm going to wire these together using one of the stems. Just gonna wrap this around. Make a tight little bunch and weave them into the maidenhair fern. And the fact that these are on wire are great because you can put them wherever you want. They're very pliable, they're easy to work with and they stay where you put them. All right, there we go. The next step is going to be adding some cotton balls to our wreath something to frame the straw flowers. If you watched our Christmas decorating demo, then you saw me use these. These are called garden picks. They come with wire on them, they're very convenient. They allow you to attach just about anything to a wreath base. I have some already picked here. Another option in attaching your cotton balls is to use wire, which we have here. This is 16 gauge wire. You can also use 18 gauge or 14 gauge, whatever you're comfortable with. Either method works just fine. So I have a few already picked. I'm just gonna use them to frame my straw flowers just by putting that garden pick into the wreath base, making sure it's attached really well and working my straw flowers around that. All right, there we go. The next step is to add some lotus pods, which come in bunches like this on really long stems. So I've broken them off just a couple inches down from the pod. I'm gonna add these around the cotton balls to give it a little bit more dimension. And again, just sticking it right into the wreath base. Anywhere that I think needs a little bit of filler or a little bit more dimension. And these are really easy to work with. You just break off the stem.
put them anywhere you think needs a little something extra. There you are. Another piece I'm going to add to my wreath are some twigs that I found growing around Colonial Williamsburg. I broke them off the trees. I'm going to use them to add a little bit more subtle dimension on the outsides of the centerpiece of the wreath. Again, just weaving these right into my grapevine. Adds a little bit of color dimension. Something else to catch the eye. Again, just framing the centerpiece of the wreath, drawing the eyes towards what you want everyone to look at, which is this beautiful centerpiece. The final touch to the wreath is adding just a little bit more dimension and a little bit of subtle color by using nigella pods. Nigella comes in bunches like this at the Colonial Nursery. And if you watched our Christmas blog, you will remember our picks and our floral tape. When I pick things together, I do odd numbers once again. So I'll just cut three or five from the bunch. Bring the stems together, line it up with my pick, wrap the wire around all three pieces. And because these are on natural stems, we want to cover them with floral tape. So I'm just going to cut a few inches of floral tape. And cover the natural stems. This will help secure the nigella onto the pick as well as protect it. There we go. So now I'm going to take my nigella pods and add them to my wreath wherever I think there's a bare spot or they need a little bit more color. And there we have it, our wreath is complete. This is the next wreath we're going to be making today. It has a preserved boxwood base. I'm going to be using some dried lavender, dried white larkspur, nigella pods, some Spanish moss, and a bird's nest. The first thing we're going to do is attach some of our Spanish moss to our robin's egg bird nest. I'm going to use some of my paddle wire again. Roll out a few inches. And weave it through. Try to be as subtle as I can with the wire so you don't see it from the front. Feed that through a bit of my moss, bring it through the back, and just tie it like a twist tie. I'm going to do that on the other side as well, because that's what we're going to use to attach the bird's nest and the moss to the wreath. Again, doing the same thing, weaving it through the back wherever I can get it. bringing it through the moss. So now I have two good places of wire that I can use to attach my bird's nest to my boxwood wreath, which I'm going to do by putting that wire into the woody part of the boxwood wreath. These boxwood wreaths are great because they're preserved, so they will last indefinitely as long as you don't let them get too wet or too dirty. So now my bird's nest is attached to my wreath. So now I'm going to add a little bit more dimension to my wreath. 
and use some twigs that I found around town and by framing the bird's nest just going to weave them into the woody part of the wreath again just like I did with the wire There is no exact science to this. Make it pleasing to you, appealing to you. And there we go. The final step to creating this wreath is adding our dried flowers, which add color, dimension, and really draw your eye to the center. So I have some nigella pods that I have picked and taped. Some dried white larkspur and some lavender. So I'm gonna cut some lavender from the bunch using odd numbers, threes and fives. I'm going to gather all the stems together using one of my three inch garden picks, wrapping that wire around the stem and the pick Now I'm going to use some tape to secure those natural stems to the pick. Again, all of these flowers and elements are natural but dried, so they will last indefinitely as long as you don't get them too wet and take care of them, clean them regularly, dust them off. They'll last as long as you want them to. So I'm just gonna take this picked white, lar lar white larkspur put it right into the woody part of my wreath. I'm gonna use some of my lavender and pair that with the larkspur. Making sure to get those picks as far down into the wreath as I can to hide them. Now, my final addition are these nigella pods. Very dimensional, very eye-catching. Going to frame the bird's nest the nigella. And there we have it. Our wreath is done.